This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. This is part six of compound linear inequalities. And on this video, we're going to do a little introduction to solving a compound inequality such as four is less than or equal to two x minus five is less than 13. And we're going to solve that particular inequality on this video. We're going to look at the compound inequality, a is less than b and b is less than c. If you have that statement, a is less than b and b is less than c, you can shorten this to write a is less than b is less than c. And if one of these was an inequality, for instance, if this was a is less than or equal to b, then this would become also a is less than or equal to b is less than c. So here's an example. Let's say we know that negative five is less than two, right? And we know that two, let's pick a number bigger than two, two is less than 10. Then I'm able to just write that as negative five is smaller than two, which is smaller than 10. So the short way of, shortcut way of writing negative five is less than two and also two is less than 10. Now, if you've got the less than symbols here, the number all the way to the left must definitely end up being smaller than the number all the way to the right. And again, I could have had a less than or equal to symbol, and this is still true. Remember what this means? It means negative five is either less than or equal to two. Well, it's actually less than two, so this is a true statement, okay? And we get exactly the same thing. Now, we usually use this when we're working with some more variables. So let's say, how would I write two is less than x and x is less than or equal to nine? The shortcut way of writing that would be two is less than x, which is less than or equal to nine. Now, keep in mind that two less than x could be written as x is greater than two, right? If two is smaller than x, then x is the, must be greater than two. So often you might see it written this way, x is greater than two and x is less than or equal to nine. And you would have to rewrite it so you get the idea here. So let's look at that. Let's say we have x is greater than or equal to negative two and is x is less than three. It doesn't really fit the model we wrote. Remember our model was if a is less than x and x is less than b, then we can just put the x in the middle, right? A then, is, x is basically in between a and b. So notice we don't have it written that way. Here's a greater than right, or greater than or equal, and here's a less than. But notice if I just rewrite this first one as negative two is less than or equal to x, and x is less than three, then I can combine them together to write negative two is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal, I'm sorry, this last one is just less than three. There we go. So I've taken x is greater than or equal to negative two and x is less than three and said it's really the same thing as negative two is less than or equal to x is less than three. Now this should match what would happen if you try graphing it on a number line. For instance, first of all, I've got that my solution here is negative two, three, that would be an interval notation. So the usual way we would um, do an and problem, a compound inequality like this, is we would first go ahead and graph x is greater than or equal to negative two, which would, let's see, let's just do a quick number line here. So let's say here's negative three, that means this is zero, and here's, let's say, four, for instance. So if I was going to graph x is greater than or equal to negative two, I, greater than or equal means we're going to go with a bracket to the right, okay? So there's x greater than or equal to negative two. We'll do that in red. Let's just do this all in one number line. Here we 
we go. And then let's also take and do x less than 3 in green. So x less than 3 we would have, for instance, the parentheses on 3, and we would go to the left. And so remember, we're looking for the intersection here because it's an and, so it's going to be right in between here, right? But we have a bracket on negative 2 and the parentheses on 3. So let's just write our final answer here. So if this is 0, I would have the bracket on negative 2. I forgot to say that's negative 3. This is 3, for instance. Bracket on negative 2 and the open parentheses on 3, and there's our answer. So it should match up to you that this solution does make sense looking at our graph of it as well. So let's say you were given this problem. 4 is less than or equal to 2x minus 5, which is less than 13. Well, you could break this up into two parts and say, well, 4 is less than or equal to 2x minus 5, and 2x minus 5 is less than 13. In other words, I'm just going backwards from what I just did before. I'm taking this compound inequality and writing it in two parts because that's what this really means. And remember, you could think of this as 2x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4, right? It doesn't matter which way you write it. Just be careful that you do it one way or the other. And then I could solve each of these. So let's see, if I were to solve this one on the left, I would add 5 to both sides. That would give me 2x is greater than or equal to 9, and then I would just divide by 2. So I get x is greater than or equal to 4 and a half. And over on the right-hand side, how would I solve this? I would add 5, which gives me 2x is less than 18 divide by 2. I'm going to get x less than 9. And, right, I've got both of these things. x is greater than or equal to 4 and a half, and x is less than 9. Now, how would I write that more compactly? Well, x is greater than or equal to 4 and a half. I could have done the whole problem leaving it with the x on the right-hand side, by the way, but this is saying 4 and a half is less than or equal to x, and x is less than 9. Notice again we have the less than both ways, so this is saying 4 and a half is less than or equal to x is less than 9. In interval notation, that would be 4 and a half with the brackets to 9 with the parentheses. But is there a shorter way of getting the same answer from how we started? which was right here. 4 is less than or equal to 2x minus 5 is less than 13. You actually don't have to break it up. Notice in both of the cases when I solved this, the first thing I did was add 5 to both sides. So we're going to take this kind of like a three-part inequality, you know, because there's three parts that, to the left, the middle, and the piece on the right, and we're going to try to solve for x by working from the middle. So if I were to normally do this, I would add 5 to both sides, right? So what we're going to do is add 5 to both sides and see what happens. I'm going to move this other stuff I have here down. Um, actually, I'll just go to a new page first to finish this. So here we are. We're trying to solve this all at once. We're going to add 5, but if you add it to one part, you have to add it to all parts. So this gives me 9 is less than or equal to 2x is less than 18. And now to solve for x, you divide everything by 2. So let's divide everything by 2. And we've got 4 and a half is less than or equal to x is less than 9. Now when you're done, if you have everything, these symbols have to both be going the direction. So both of these are either less than or less than or equal. You can't have one be greater and one be less than. That will not work. This will give us our same solution. It's in between four and a half and nine.
So that's how we're going to solve, I'm going to call these maybe tripart, instead of two parts, tripart inequalities. You work from the inside and whatever you do to the middle to isolate your x, you're going to do to the number on the left and the number on the right. Keep in mind if you multiply or divide by a negative, these inequality symbols are going to change. Okay, we'll do some more problems um, on the next video. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.